This problem is pretty tricky, so let's start off easy. Now we're told about two different situations here in which the red car travels 44.5 meters at a rate of 20 kilometers per hour, and another situation in which the car travels 76.6 meters at a rate of 40 kilometers per hour. So let's start this problem off by defining some variables that correspond to this situation. So I have defined at 20 kilometers per hour uh, over 44.5 meters as our sub 1 variables and the other two variables for the sub 2 variables. But you might notice that our units here do not align. So let's perform a unit conversion uh, to change these speeds here into SI units of meters per second. Converting from kilometers per meters and hours to seconds we get 5.556 meters per second for speed 1, V1, and 11.11 meters per second for V2. I am trying to round to as many significant figures as possible because it's generally a good practice to try and preserve as many digits as possible until you get to your final calculation. Now let's actually try to analyze this situation here. So at some point, somewhere in the middle here, the red car and the green car will be passing by each other after the red car has passed by these two distances the problem gives us, in, depending on which situation we're looking at. We can use this information to calculate the amount of time it took for the red car to reach that point before it passed by the green car in either situation. Remember that our definition of speed is an amount of distance divided by the amount of time. So if we want to isolate time and get time on its own, we can multiply time by both sides and then divide both sides by V to see that some amount of time is equal to the distance traveled divided by the speed at which it travels. And we can apply this principle in both scenarios we're told about to find the amount of time it takes for the red car to meet up with the green car in both situations. So we can find T1 for the car as x1 over v1, and T2 for the red car as x2 over v2. So let's plug in our values. And the times we find are 8.01 seconds and 6.89 seconds. These are the times at which the two cars meet up in either situation. Assuming that both cars begin moving at t equals 0, as the problem tells us, that means that these time values should apply to the green car as well as the red car, since those are the times at which the cars pass by each other. Therefore, we can use these time values as variables for the green car's motion, and since the problem is only asking us about the green car anyway, we can now start to use our kinematics equations to solve for the variables surrounding the green car. So now we turn to the basic kinematics equations we have to determine which one we want to use. Now first off, since we went to the lengths to find the time variables, we'll want to pick whichever one actually includes the time variables, so we can cross this one off. We also want to pick an equation that will allow us to find the initial velocity and the acceleration of the green car using the displacement and the distance the cars have traveled at a certain point. Since the first equation doesn't include any variables regarding distance or displacement, we can disregard that one and choose this equation to use. Now you may notice that we're trying to solve for two variables at once here, which is going to be pretty hard, but that's why it's a good thing that we have these variables for when we have two different speeds, representing two different instances when the cars meet up at two different coordinates. So what we actually want to do here is set up a system of equations that will allow us to find both variables. And here is the skeleton of that system of equations we'll be using. First of all, the x1 and the x2, the, those refer to the final position of the green car in both scenarios, which will refer to the horizontal positions at which the cars meet up. These x's here will refer to the initial position of the green car, and if we take our zero point to be where the red car is, then the green car's starting position will be the total distance between them, which we're given as x sub g, or 220 meters. 
Let's also plug in the time values we have. So 8.01 seconds for T1 and 6.89 seconds for T2. So now that we have our values plugged in, let's simplify these down a bit if we want to actually solve for this system of equations. First, let's uh, get rid of this 220 here. So in both equations, let's subtract 44.5 by 220 and 76.6 .6 by 220 so that we have these variable lists constants on their own. And we can also simplify these constants with the a's here since we can just square the time values and then multiply them by a half in order to, again, simplify our equations down even more. All right, now our system of equations is starting to come along pretty nicely. Let's actually solve for this now. The first part of the problem asks for us to find the initial velocity of the green car. So in order to do that using the method that we typically use to solve for a system of equations, let's first isolate A, the acceleration, in one of the equations, and then substitute that into the second one. So in this top equation here, for instance, let's subtract both sides by 8.01 V0, and then divide both sides by 32.08 to get A on its own. And this is roughly what it looks like. Since we have one denominator with two different terms in the numerator, we can simplify this down a bit by dividing negative 175.5 by 32.08, and then subtract that from 8.01 V0 by 32.08. And in simplified form, this is what it looks like. Now let's plug this in for A in the second equation. Now let's distribute over the parentheses with multiplication. And of course, these two V0 terms here will subtract. So we simplify it down to this right here. And lastly, we can add 129.8 to both sides and then divide both sides by 0 0.9621. And lastly, we use a calculator, or whatever your preferred method of finding this, and get a value of negative 13.9 meters per second. And that is what we get for the initial velocity of the green car. And this value does check out, because it's negative. And we already know from the situation that since the green car is traveling to the left, then in our defined coordinate system, its initial velocity should be negative. So yeah, you should always check to make sure your answers are reasonable. Finally, we want to solve for the acceleration. And as we mentioned above, we found a formula for that up here. We used it to help ourselves solve the system of equation for v naught. But now that we know what v naught is, we can simply plug it into our equation. Plugging negative 13.9 meters per second into our formula for acceleration, and we get an acceleration of negative 2.0 meters per second squared. And that is the acceleration of the green car. Because this answer is negative, this tells us that the green car must also be accelerating negatively.